guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl faith if this is your first time here you are super welcome please feel free to subscribe down below and also click on the notification button so when i post a video you'll be the first to know and if you're a returning viewer thanks for sticking with me on this jolly ride on this video i am going to be walking you through a canadian style resume now for those of you who do not know i'm a human resource professional and i'm based in canada and I'm going to be using my expertise and personal experiences to helping you land that job in Canada. So a few weeks ago, the CRS scores dropped. So yay for everyone. Definitely a number of applications are going to be tripping in and a number of people are going to be migrating to Canada. So when it comes to resumes, there are so many schools of thoughts as to how a resume should be couched. But now if you are yet to build leverage, if this is going to be your first job, then you want to do what is generally acceptable here in Canada. Because if your resume is off, you are off the table. I'm just going to pick my notes real quickly because I do not want you to miss out on any important point. So now when it comes to a resume, there are two things you need to understand. One is the length of the resume and two is understanding the real estate of your resume. Now, when it comes to the length of your resume, people would say two pages, five pages. But like I said earlier, because you are trying to build that leverage, you want to conform with the Canadian style resume. And what is standard here is a page or not more than two pages. So that's what you want to do. Uncle, it is not an autobiography. Okay, don't go and be giving us long story. It is also not poetry. So you want to stick to just a maximum of two pages. Now, in terms of understanding the real estate of your resume, the first half of the first page of your resume is the most important part. That is where you want to put all your ammunition and that is the part of your resume that you want to speak to the recruiter. The resume is divided into four different sections. The personal information section, the introduction stroke summary section, the work experience section, and the educational qualification section. So let's talk about the personal information section. Now this section contains your name, your address, your phone number, email address, and a link to your LinkedIn profile. So now let's talk about the name. Uncle, if you have a long first name, please shorten it. I know your name carries deep meaning and has a rich culture behind it. But if your name is Zikora Na Chigidimma, you want to shorten it to Zico or Zik, you know, like in Amdia Zikoe. Or if your name is Oluwa Shenkan Barakumi, are you the name of You want to shorten it to Olu. Or if you're female, maybe Barbara. Or if your name is Ihuruma Ojinegba, like mine. You want to shorten it to Uma. Just something that they can pronounce. Because it helps with inclusion. Imagine if you were the hiring manager. Would you hire you with that kind of name? Eh, a hairy manager is looking for someone to fit into his team. And yeah, here you are, your name cannot even fit into a resume. No, uh -uh, you said check him now. It won't work. So you want to shorten that name. I know someone is there saying, are you trying to say we should throw away our culture and heritage? I'm not saying that. Please slow down. Be coming down. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that you need to put yourself in the hiring manager's shoes. And just use a name that you can pronounce. It's, it's better, it's easier, it increases your chances. Trust me, I know. Besides, when you already have a job, if you've gotten your job, then feel free to put all your names. In fact, if your name has 50 alphabets, put it in, that's okay. But like I said, this is your first job, so you want to do what is generally acceptable. Please shorten that first name. That is also why we have um, legal name and preferred name as an official thing here in Canada. If you're filling an official form, there's usually a space for legal name and preferred name. So please, shorten Oluwashen Kan Barbara for me to something shorter. For the address, you want to keep it to just your city, your province, and the postal code. No need to put like the full address. It is not necessary here in Canada. I know in your home country, you typically would put like the full address, but it is not necessary here. Besides, when a recruiter sees your resume and sees like the full address, they kind of know that you're not from here and you really don't want your resume standing out for that kind of reason. So please keep it to just the city, province and postal code. For the phone number, 
please put a phone number that works. If you have two numbers, that's okay, but just make sure that they work and you can be reached on those numbers. And please try to keep your voicemail as professional as possible. Don't leave a voicemail, you know, as if you are talking to your mates, hey, what's up? Or, you know, something that sounds like, hi, this is Faith, leave a message, but I'll probably never listen. Mm -mm. It's not going to work. Put a professional voicemail and put a number that works. In terms of the email address, some of you, your email address is sweetchicksforlife at yahoo.com or rockwithme90 at gmail.com or sugarplum at yahoo.com. Auntie, are you a job seeker or a sugar seeker? You need to choose your struggle. Let us know where you stand because you cannot have such an unprofessional email address and you say you are looking for work and you want a recruiter to take you seriously. You have not started. You please keep your email addresses as professional as possible. Preferably your name and your surname at whatever it is, at Yahoo, Gmail, or whatever it is, .com. It gives the recruiter the impression that you are serious and you are ready for work. Please don't use any of those funny, funny email addresses. And I've seen all sorts in my career, so I can tell you for free. Stick to a professional email address. Now, when it comes to your LinkedIn profile, I already did a video on, you know, how your LinkedIn profile should be. So, you know, I'm going to link it up here. So please feel free to refer to that video. But for your LinkedIn profile, if you want to put the link on your resume, that's okay. You can choose to do that. But make sure that your LinkedIn profile matches your resume. It is very important. If you know that that's not the case, it's best you don't put the link. If you know you don't want a recruiter to check it, it's best you don't put the link. But I must say, whether you put the link or not, the recruiter can decide to still look you up on LinkedIn. So I think the bottom line is you can put the link, you can sign not to put the link, but if you do put the link, the chances of them looking you up are higher and make sure that your LinkedIn profile matches your resume completely. When it comes to the personal information section, please do not put date of birth, do not put your marriage style status, do not put your ethnicity, Nobody cares about those ones. Those ones are not important. In your home country, I know that, you know, maybe it's a thing to put your picture on your resume. I know someone is like, ah, ah, no picture. I've seen all sorts, okay? I was working in a big four and then I saw a resume. The lady actually put a full-sized picture on her resume. And see, is this a modeling company? Like, you want to work in a professional services firm and you're putting that kind of picture, please. Do not put a picture on your Canadian resume. It is not necessary. It is not important. Keep everything as professional as possible. So now let's talk about the introduction stroke summary section. Now this, in my opinion, is one of the most important parts of your resume. From the first few sentences, you want the recruiter to already have a grasp of your capabilities and have an idea of who you are. So try as much as possible to keep it short, sweet and very impactful. I advise that if you can, put your job title at the top left corner so that when a recruiter sees your resume at a glance, they already know what you do. Also, when there is a match between the job title that you have stated there and the title of the job being advertised, the ATS system can pick this up and this may improve your chances of getting that job. If your field or your career is project based, try to as much as possible, you know, the preference is that you use um, scope or size as against currency because the cost of project of that same project is different across continents. So you want to use um, the scope or the size that's preferable. Also, when you're applying for jobs, this is a part of the resume that you will have to be tweaking to suit the job ads. I'm going to be doing a separate video on that. But have in mind that the people who are reviewing these resumes are, you know, for the most part, junior level recruiters, and they're just looking straight at the job ad and comparing with your resume. So if it doesn't really speak to them, they will toss your resume aside. So you want to make sure you're tweaking it to suit every job ad. If you can nail this part of your resume, trust me, you are well on your way to landing that job. So now the work experience section. Now this section of course is where you want to itemize all your work experiences starting with the most recent to the least recent. I'm going to be doing a separate video on this so that I can 
give you a few tips on how you can use buzzwords and how you can tweak this part to suit job ads. So watch out for that video. So now the educational qualification section. In this part, you want to list out your educational qualifications. Well, preferably from the most recent to the least recent. But then again, if the most recent is not as strong as the least recent, maybe you want to do some swapping here and there. Put your education plainly and simply. No long story. If you have 10 years experience, great, that's good for you. And you're applying for a role that also requires that level of experience. It's okay. But please do not put first class, I graduated with first class. It is no longer relevant at that point. Or nobody cares. It's okay that you graduated with first class, but it's not relevant anymore. Just they are focused on your experience at that point, not what you graduated with. But if you are a fresh graduate or maybe you have one or two years of experience, by all means, you know, put I graduated with honors or whatever it is, then it will be relevant because you're trying to build leverage. And these things are the things that would help increase your chances of getting that role. If you have foreign certifications, you want to include those in already. And if you have an idea of the province that you're going to settle in, there are certain um, certifications that you can get for free in some provinces. For example, in Ontario, there's a certificate that you can get from the Ministry of Labor. It is called the Worker Health and Safety Awareness Training. Nothing too special, but at least it will show that you are from here. So you can already do that. I'm going to be linking it in my description box, so look out for that. That's something you can do that may increase your chances. So as much as possible, when it comes to this section, you want to make sure that any relevant um, education, you throw it in just to put yourself in a better step. Now let's talk about references. For a Canadian style resume, there is no need to put references will be available on request. No need to also state all your references. During the recruitment process, when you are done with the interview stages, the recruiter is going to ask you to provide references. And these references are usually of supervisors or previous managers. So uncle, you that when you were resigning, it was sweating your body. You were saying, I, I quit, I quit, I quit. Uncle, you want to go and mend that fence. You want to go and mend that fence very quickly. Those of you that quarreled with your previous managers, I beg, go and mend that relationship because when it comes to references, you are going to need them. If you are a fresh graduate, you know the references you're going to need are from your university. So that lecturer that you quarreled with, you want to go and be calling him and be saying hello very quickly before you have a need for those references. Now, I know, of course, I'm in HR and I've heard all sorts. A lot of people use questionable references. But I want to tell you something. This country is very big on integrity. And if it is found out down the line that, you know, the references you provided were not genuine, it's going to be a very big issue. So there's no need to go that route. Just go and mend all those fences. It's easier that way. Okay? Now, if you are enrolled in a Canadian school already or you're getting a Canadian education, that's even great for you. Try to use your lecturers in Canada here. You know, I can imagine that those ones will carry more weight because they're already in the system. So any reference from them will definitely be something, you know, good. So you want to use those sort of references, okay? As a guide, here is a Canadian style resume. So now you are done couching your resume. Resume is now good to go. You want to make sure that you review that resume. Auntie, put your resume, use that review tab in Microsoft Word. Eh? Bill Gates and his family did not just come together. They didn't say, oh, this review tab button will look good in Microsoft. Let's just leave it there in Microsoft Word. No, it is there for a reason. It is meant to be used. So please use it. Review your resume for typos. I am detail oriented. I am detail oriented. But then your resume has a typo. I don't know how that looks to you, but it doesn't work. So make sure you review your resumes. Also, save your resumes well. What I mean is, don't save as doc one, resume two. Save it properly, especially if you're going to be uploading it or sending it out. You want to say something like, um, resume hyphen faith Joshua, or faith Joshua hyphen resume. It is more professional. 
don't just save it as doc one doc two it doesn't work also when you are sending your resume out if you're sending it via email to a recruiter please try to pdf it it's more professional don't leave it in word if you are uploading it you know uh, in an application form right i know different schools of thoughts have different things to say about this some would say um, you know if you put it in, in pdf the ats system will not pick it it's neither here nor there but yeah if you want to be safe you can leave it in microsoft word but if you're sending via email please make sure that you pdf it and don't just shoot an email and say hey here you go or fyi or please find attach please find attach what what is in the body of that email you need to put something in the body of that email and you need to put something that looks like a cover letter in the body of that email it is more professional i can tell you when i see and when i receive an email from a potential hire and then i just see here you go or here it is or please find attached it doesn't work for me when i see a beautifully couched email in response to my job ad I am tempted to look at that resume so that is something that you want to do there are a couple of websites where you can build an actual resume i'm going to be linking one or two in the description box having built the resume you also want to look at it and consider some of the tips in this video if you have any questions at any point in time please feel free to drop them in the comment section below and i'll do my best to address them i mean Let's pay forward, right? When it comes to resume writing or all of these tips I've talked about, there is no hard and fast rule, right? But like I said, you want to just make sure that you are doing things, you are conforming to the standards here in Canada. You want to do things that would increase your chances as much as possible. I can tell you that these tips work. I use them to land my first job. And also as an HR professional, I can tell you that they actually work. Because uncle that is forming for people back home. I'm in Canada. I'm in Canada. I'm in Canada. But you know, get work. Wahala for who get PR, who no get work. Oh, I'll see you on my next video.